I have placed our rendered shot on the desktop rail. To export it, we right-click on the shot and select Export. Export dialog box pops up. We will first select the disk we wish to export to. Navigate to our project folder. Select gear and create new folder that we will name renders and double click on it. In the export dialog box we will select movie and format preset of Apple ProRes 422 HQ. In the file name we will name the export SHOT90 version 1. Click on export in foreground and click export. We can then import the shot to check the export. Once we finish working and deliver the project, we need to archive the project, i.e. backup all the media and setups used and created in the project. To avoid having bigger archive than necessary, we would normally make sure that we remove all the media that wasn't used or isn't relevant to our finished project from our libraries and reels. Once we are happy that the project is organized and tidy, we go to the Media Hub and at the top of the viewing panel, select Archives. We will navigate to the disk we wish to store our archive, select Gear, create a new folder and double click on it to open it. Name it Archive in the Archive Editing panel, under Linked Archive Options, there are options to use Archived Path, which uses the workstation that archived the material as an access point to the content of the archive, or Convert to Local Path. We will select Use Archived Path. Under Media Options, we will select Cache Media on Archive, which will create the intermediate media of all the media in our project. This means that we can restore the archive on any flame, anywhere, and won't need the access to the original media files. We will also select Include Renders. We will click on New Archive and the dialog box pops up. The name of the project is automatically filled in with Archive added to the name at the end. Comment is already filled with the date of archive creation. Limit file size is on, set to 1 GB by default, which means that during the archiving, a new file will be created every time a file size hits 1 GB. We can change the limit file size to another size. We will keep it on 1 GB and click Create. The archive file is created and we can click on Archive Project. In a pop-up menu, the size of the archive and the available space are shown, and we are asked to confirm the operation. We click on Continue and Flame archives the project. We can only restore the archive from within Flame. To do that, we need to change to another project and load it. then choose the project on Flame that we archived. Click Edit and select Delete Project from the drop-down menu. Click Delete, Confirm and close the window. If we go to the Media Hub, we can see that our Archive project is listed under Archives tab. This is because it was archived on this system. If it had been archived on another system, and the archive was sent to you, it wouldn't be listed here, but we would have to navigate to it on the disk given to us. We select the archive, click Open Archive, select the project, and click on Restore Project. Flame has now restored the project, and if you click on the Flame logo and go to Project and User Settings, the restored project has been added to the list of projects we can open. We can select it 
load it and close the tab to return to desktop. I hope that these tutorials have helped you get an introduction to Flame and given you an overview of the Flame's workflow. For more in-depth tutorials on the individual Flame tools, please go to Autodesk Flame Learning Channel on YouTube.